We're looking at materials in C++. This will be covering the different ways that we can define our materials and then change them at runtime. A few things to know about the setup before we look at the code. Uh, what I have here is an object, very simple actor class with a static mesh and several different materials exposed. So the default one is element zero. You're familiar with this if you've ever seen or worked with materials in the editor. So this is the one that we can change in the editor. So if I change this to something else, that will update here. We then have material one and two. The reason for this is that we have a custom Boolean down here, checking whether we should choose one. And if we don't choose one, then we're gonna choose two, which means when we press play, we will pick one of these elements here. So with one selected, this should go orange if I simulate. And we can see there that has changed to the correct color. If I change this to false, which means we're gonna pick two, then that will go blue when we press play. So that's what we'll be looking at how we can change in our code to get that working. And then finally, there are two other slots down here, which is a material slot and an instant slot. So this material slot just here is only allowing us to choose the base materials. So the non-instanced material. And then as the name would indicate down here, this is only allowing us to pick the instanced materials, but it does mean that we're limited. We cannot pick the base material. So if I try to find the, uh, I know the parent material for the MI underscore flat is just M underscore flat. We can't see that. And I've exposed this because it's not really something that I've seen covered elsewhere. And I just wanted to show what the differences are between the type of materials and which ones you can use and select if you wanted the different options to be available in the editor exposed to designers or artists or just in general in the editor. Over in the header file, you can see that this is a basic actor class. No extra includes were needed. Quite simply, in the private section, I've included a uStatic mesh component named mesh. And then these are the examples of the different materials that we'll be looking at. So for material one and material two, these are the U material interface. And as you can see by the comment here, these are the same types of materials that you'll see. If you dive into the mesh component, look at all of the preset mesh information uh, when working with the standard components inside of Unreal, all of these are using the U material interface type, uh, which is the one which will allow you to use the base material as well as the material instances. So this is quite important if you want to kind of replicate your own material properties similar to what are used on static meshes, then you're gonna want the U material interface. In comparison, you can see down below, I've got the material, which is set as a U material, and then the material instance, which is a U material instance. And as the naming conventions would suggest, the first one is only going to allow you to use those base materials as I showed, and the material instance will only allow you to select material instances as I've shown. Now these are the two which I normally see kind of recommended to use on uh, different tutorials and things online and I just wanted to bring that up in case you're ever wondering why when you're using those you're only seeing one of the options rather than the other and how you might go about seeing both of the options then that would be using the interface but of course if you wanted to restrict people from seeing loads of abundant materials that they probably won't ever need then this is where it's useful to know that you do have the option for the instance or just the base material by defining them that way. And of course, all of these have the U property of edit anywhere and placed in the category of materials. And then finally, we've got that Boolean check down below, which you'll see how this is used over in the code file. So like I said, nice and simple in the code file, all I've done, I'm going to need to create the U static mesh component using the create default sub object. And I've set that to be the root component. And then for the materials that we actually want to swap between, we need to create these as well. So I've done that using the same create default sub object call at this time, passing in the U material interface and naming the materials accordingly. So material one and material two. And again, just to show up here, that no extra includes or anything are needed. So if you're following along exactly, this should all work. And then the final step, nice and simple on begin play. All I'm doing is I'm calling the set material on the mesh, which is a standard built-in function call. Uh, it's taking in the first argument to be which element on the static mesh to change. So if you had a setup where you had multiple material slots, then you would choose between zero, one, two, and so on. In this case, I know that I only have the single material slot. So we're using the index zero and then just using an inline if check to see if B choose one has been selected. If it has, then we're going to use material one. If it hasn't, so if that's set to false, then we will use material two. And that's all I was doing to set the material and swap that on the begin play. 
So of course you could use something like this to swap out the material being shown for kind of overlap events if something is being ray traced into the world and you wanted to swap the material to show a highlighted effect then this is the functionality that you can use for that kind of setup. So back in the editor just to recap now what we've looked at in the code you can now get a better understanding of what's happening when we press play so we can come in and out toggle the, uh, the choose one boolean here and this will switch between the two options in this slot here. These of course aren't going to be selected but this was purely just to show the base material option here so we can only see the three base materials in the project and then the material instance option here so we can only see the instanced materials that are inside of the project. And of course as I was saying whilst in the code uh, the material interface which is used here we can see both the base materials and the material instances which is exactly what you can see from the default material slot that we have here so that kind of replicates that a lot more closely so another nice simple topic here as always if you've enjoyed the video or found this useful please do leave a like and share the video around that is greatly appreciated and really helps the channel to grow and reach as many people as possible as ever just wanted to say a big thank you for all of the support from all of the patrons over on the patreon channel your support is always appreciated and allows me to keep making the weekly content for the channel and of course if you don't already support the channel and wanted to take a look at what is on offer on the patreon page then links for that are in the description below otherwise if you just wanted to be kept up to date with when the latest content on the channel is uploaded and released then do be sure to hit the subscribe and notification bell for all of that good stuff and as ever, thanks for watching, and I will see you all next time.